Yeah, tweet it. Okay. Meanwhile, I'll just start uh, a service that I wrote, a REST API for notes. Can you? Can you? Sorry, can I what? Cool, cool. Just add a little bit of padding there. It's really annoying. Where? At the base of it. Like at the top of it here, maybe like make this a div or something and give it some padding or something. Okay. This this thing. Yeah, yeah, because this is the container for the whole thing, right? Mhm. Mm okay. So you are talking line thirty three. Uh, Correct. Yes. Yeah. This, this is a empty uh, whatever angular braces thing. Yeah, this is called a fragment, right? Uh, so yes. Remember we uh, learned that. Whenever we are supposed to return multiple elements from a given element, mm -hmm. React doesn't like that mm -hmm. because of the inherent API. Yeah, it's it won't JSX. It yeah, yeah, and JSX fine. I mean, but mm -hmm. JSX also from the parent, it should only return one. So the parent should be one entity, right? So initially, before this fragment API was released, uh, what you had to use do is you had to write divs. Like mm -hmm. this had to be a div. Mm -hmm. This had to be a div or any other parent containing element, basically, right? So people didn't like that. Uh, the so-called purist because they wanted the markup to be pure, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't want extra divs in there, mm -hmm. and also this also like, slightly used to fuck up with the uh, basically hierarchy on how you write CSS, right? Because then you'll have to encounter for all the extra divs that you're going to put in. Mm -hmm. So what they did is basically they introduced this fragment API. Now this is like a shallow container, mm -hmm. so you have to write div first. Okay. You have to say div first because like so this is like a shallow container. This basically is called a fragment, mm -hmm. and what they basically say is okay, write this, and internally we'll handle the case, right? Because okay. of backward compatibilities, they couldn't just drastically say okay, two are allowed now, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going, it has to be an object also. So the style bit has to be an object. So, so what you have to write it something like this. Wait, let me change it a little bit. Uh, right. So uh, it has to be an object, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the double braces are so that uh, so the first brace. Right here, the mm -hmm. outer one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this allows us to write arbitrary JavaScript in uh, basically JSX, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, we did a lot of this. This single bracket allows us to write JavaScript, right? Yes. And since style takes a object, that's why the inner bracket is there, right? Okay. So that's the reasoning behind it. So I have to remove the double this thing. Okay, you are. Yeah, you this. have to remove the ones from behind. Mm -hmm. Now I have to. Uh, yep, and just make this string. Yeah, no, no, padding is fine. I mean, padding is JavaScript property. You can set that padding from JavaScript also. Just okay. make it a string. Yep, this should work. This isn't though. See it? It's giving a error. Oh, okay. So yeah. dev here see, as well. Yeah, the pro the problem is evident. If you see the error, you will like no. Mm -hmm. You read the error, it will tell you a lot about it. Does it goes here or here? So initially we were looking, we were using fragments, right? Mm -hmm. Now we have converted the top fragment to a div. So the bottom one is still a fragment. Mm -hmm. So we need to change it to a div. Okay, changed it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So uh, we can add a little more. I didn't specify like what what anymore. kind of like top bottom or whatever. Yeah. So this is a shorthand syntax. This mm -hmm. basically means for all four sites. Okay. Yeah, you can also cool. do so. The other syntax uh, in this is also you can do two space separated strings. So the first one is going to apply for top and bottom, and the second one is apply for right and left. Okay, okay, got it. So you can give us space and then say twenty. So then it will be top and bottom ten, and then right left will be twenty. Okay. So I have this now. Uh, okay. So you can start with a refresher. I would say so. I think the entry point is this, right? Or is it? No, we we don't need this one, right? First dot js. Uh, yep. Okay, I can delete this one. Uh, 
in index we are entering app inside app we are using chakra provider to encapsulate the to do app we are initializing hi and hello and then inside the to do app we are returning these two divs based on this condition is no, it more only one div yeah one uh, it's only one div yeah one div and then there can't be two right yes. that's the whole point that there can't be two mm -hmm. then we have this is edit mode and then this mm -hmm. this bracket is what uh, let me see this ends where I'm not sure uh here okay okay so inside this we have this collapse condition this, no? you'll know collapse it like this yeah you know how to collapse stuff yeah so is edit mode so this is yeah. javascript and then we have a unordered list in which we have written items dot map uh, we are basically mapping all items from list item and then returning a list uh, instance or whatever index let's say and then we are giving them two methods to it's delete called a element. component okay so in react land this thing this thing is called a component li like uli understand no, uh, any compositional unit of ui Mm -hmm. that you create it's called a component this okay. is not part of html right we created this okay so yeah, yeah. is called ul dot uh, yes thing. yeah we Correct. yeah i think we did that so you know we can kind of separate this one and then wherever we want to change this we can just change this align will reflect everywhere right to kind of have it same okay then delete item let's yep, go to that, that function idea. so this to do app has uh, i think we have defined some states and these functions use these states and modifies these so i pass in an index and then i use mm -hmm. them to kind of modify those states and since we are using use yep. state function we basically used internal state to replicate crud operations mm -hmm. and then uh, yep. is edit mode yeah all of these were states we initialize them with something mm -hmm. and then uh, we pass in the index and it it worked on the index yeah got so it so do you remember why we needed this is edit mode what's what was the need for this yeah uh, i think let's say uh, update if we do right mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. will load it and then uh, yep so we wanted to repurpose this uh, box that we have here right mm -hmm. with the add button and we wanted to repurpose this mm -hmm. and quickly add a border to this so that so, we can see this Uh, when I use some ugly color, oh, this should do it. Then I want to do it. Do you want me to do some bottle with also? Hmm. Why are you doing? You can maybe set background color. Uh, no, no. Uh, okay, let's try this. Uh, let's give it a bottle with also. I could have done border and then use that short and property, but just want to show that you can like use many of these. Your cursor is kind of frozen. Uh, my cursor is frozen. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Yep. We should do it, right? Uh, I can't give input styles. Is that real? This real? I have no clue why it's not working. I think there's something. Do you want to press save, or it it just works? No. Wait. Uh, let's try this in Dev Tools. Uh, so on input, if I give a border. Of one pixels, 
the border is going to be solid. Why don't we try with and background color? We can. It's fine, I mean. But give it a background color. That's fine, I mean. And just why? Hey, it's working. Why isn't it working here? Border is one pixel solid red. That should work. Try Control S. No, didn't change. Try no. Let's try refreshing. Yeah, it's not loading. Not Something loading. is wrong with I think uh, code sandbox. Hey, okay, ignore this. Let's just do something else. Mm -hmm. uh, ignore, ignore. Let's just keep that. Uh, we are anyways not going to. Okay. Okay. Hello. Are there comments? Uh, yeah. This okay. is Jagdish, she's a friend from Twitter. Okay. Uh -huh. So. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we were here. Uh, so, we <coughs> have an input. We have an on change value, I remember. This is always used <coughs> as a pair. You do <coughs> an on change and then you use a set value function to set the value and you use that value from the state. Correct, yeah. Okay. So. Why yeah. is this important though? Because if you use the value directly, it won't it, it mm -hmm. won't refresh automatically. Correct. So this keeps them in sync. Mm -hmm. So you do on change and wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, mm -hmm. yep, you remember on click you do update item set value to clear it out. Set is mm -hmm. it's is edit mode equals false. And this one is which mm -hmm. button? This is uh, don't quite remember yeah. which button is this. The update text under yeah, the yeah. Says it, no. yeah, I was yeah, I was looking for this text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is okay, update yeah. button, and then yeah. uh, where's where's the delete button then? So this text is important, right? So if you remember, this text does something different. Mm -hmm. uh, try pressing the update button. Yes. See what happens when you press the update button. Yes, it's, it updates the uh, the button. Uh, yeah, correct. So that's why we said, right, we are repurposing it. Mm -hmm. Because okay. so in this edit is... mode, we have a different view. Okay, so this is that button. And then... Uh... Ah, now I know why it's not working. Why? Do you see why? No. Because we have two different inputs and the other one renders in that case. Oh, okay. Got it. So... Got a, we want sense. to so and this is the input yeah. right and we, we are using just the base i would say right. input jsx we can also yep. create yep. i would say one class for input right i will create yeah we could totally do that yeah but uh, see we have to use it at two different places only right mm -hmm. so you'll have to add that whole thing to both of them so mm -hmm. it won't work if you add it just to one mm -hmm. we have to edit uh, already an atomic unit right Yes, but then let's so, say you apply a style sheet to this input, then you also have to correct. apply it to this yeah, so one. So for that, for that you can do that, but uh, for any other case, that's an atomic unit of UI already. Okay. So if you want to do the just that particular thing, then it's mm -hmm. fine. I mean, you can create another event for that. Okay. So. But I'll... functionally, this is already an atomic piece of UI. Okay. So I'll copy this import, and then we want to mm -hmm. return. Uh, if you want to export a function that we can then import, so I'll just copy okay. paste it. I'll call it uh, input, and then I'll keep the props here in case we want mm -hmm. it. And then okay. we mm -hmm. want to return instead of this, we'll return a input. Mm -hmm. Like that. Nope. It's a self-enclosing tag, so you just don't need the closing one. You'll have to end it with a forward slash. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just use this then, single or the, uh, the so other one. So the slash goes at the end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If it's single, it it goes in the end. Okay. Yeah. So now I want to uh, do a CSS here. Uh, yeah. So you can do style. Uh, style. Uh huh equals and then this and I want to um, give it a border or what border color what was it 
Uh, so you can write uh, so style, then do an object, mm -hmm. uh, and then inside the object, just say border, mm -hmm. and then in a string, let's write. Uh, so not equals. Uh, so it's an object, right? So the yeah. assignment colon. Happens. Yes. Colon. Uh, so it's going to be one pixel. Solid. Two pixel is also fine. Solid, yeah. And give it a ugly color. Okay. So I'll do fine. two pixel solid black and then yeah. I'll, yeah. Use, yeah. I'll have to import this one so I'll yeah. go to this file yeah. import um, input from dot slash input and then I can replace this with import Yep, now it's there. Cool. But you see, now uh, some things are not there, right? Mm -hmm. So it will, won't be functional. Uh, try pressing the edit uh, button, update button, it won't work. It did because it's on the button and not the input. Uh, sorry? Actually, no. I think it didn't because update should be populating uh, it with the same text, right? So yep. it kind so of didn't see work. in the console there is uh, there should be an error. So like yeah, yeah. this is a very common situation. Mm -hmm. So what you basically did is you took an atomic piece of UI, right? Mm -hmm. And then you uh, made it a component because you wanted to add certain sections of detail that is unique to uh, or that is common to all the components that you are going to use, right? Mm -hmm. So now what you have to do is you have to uh, also move certain properties. Mm -hmm. So the one is type, which is common in both, if you see. Mm -hmm. So type is common in both. So what you have to do is go back to your input mm -hmm. uh, and then add a type there. Type equals uh, and then Next. props dot type. No, no, it's uh, the type is just a string. Okay. Uh, we don't want a JavaScript bits there. Okay, then type equals what props? A string. No, no, a basic string mm -hmm. which says text. Okay. Uh, a string with double quotes. Okay, got it. Paste it there. So, uh, and this brings me to one thing. Uh, no, it, it didn't work. Still looks weird for me. Yeah. I'm not sure if the if the console has the previous error or is it? Yeah, these are different oh, no, errors. No, wait, wait. Yeah, now it's kind of real time. Yes. Yeah. So see now, uh, see, uh, let's go. Let's go back to the code gap. Mm -hmm. And in our input, uh, we see that okay, type was common. Mm -hmm. We move that mm -hmm. uh, styles. We want it common, so we move that right. Mm -hmm. But these two properties on change and on value, uh, the value one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, these are going to be unique, right? Yes. So now. How do we make our component such that the uh, our component can support unique values? Mm -hmm. Can we somehow so use, like the unfold the whole props, all all of the props? Yep. So that's that's exactly the idea, right? So the input is a component, right? Mm -hmm. Now this type is not needed. So on line fifty-seven, I'm removing it. Okay. Okay. So if you go to line fifty-seven, I'll remove this input, right? Now uh, what I actually want is these two should be applied to my input component mm -hmm. which is the atomic actual layer which actually does something useful if given to values called on change and value right mm -hmm. so i want these to actually be applied to my input right mm -hmm. so this is where you actually functionally use props so if I, you go to input.js right mm -hmm. and i'll show you how you can do that so if you, the value that input actually works on is called value right mm -hmm. and now the prop that i am passing is also called value it's not updating yeah it's it's there it's in the you are typing in the end okay yeah so correct. now i can see it. So, so value equals props yeah, now you see value. that yes correct so now basically what this is doing is this is giving my component and interface to interact with the outside world, right? Mm -hmm. That's how we interact with the outside world. Yes. We use props. So, uh, can you do the same thing for on change also? Yes. 
but why are we doing uh, single brackets here? Uh, Prop start. So, the first pair of brackets mm -hmm. allows you to write JavaScript. Okay. Right. The style. Is oh yes, got it. Yeah, got it. Prop that accepts an object. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right? got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah kind so, of. So uh, the on change one is called prop start on change. Mm -hmm. So now uh, you right. mentioned the word interface, mm -hmm. right? So what happens right. if I don't pass in a value and a on change? Yeah, so this will be undefined, right? So props at the end of the day is just an object. And yes. In the so let's say access properties from an object that's a, that are not defined, it mm -hmm. gives undefined. So it will throw an error then? No, it will just say undefined if the inherent function mm -hmm. that's at the end of the day going to use the value bit. Mm -hmm. if that w works for undefined that's fine if it doesn't work for undefined then it'll be a problem okay so it 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 does not enforces me to kind of uh, pass in these two values right yep yep it doesn't and that's why we had to make no solutions for this so there was a thing called uh, what was it called so there was a thing i can't remember what was it called but that was exactly this right mm -hmm. so when you use a component it will enforce you to pass all the components that the component uh, basic component needs mm -hmm. right so that will ensure that you are passing those values right it was called something props or something i don't remember okay. but if you use typescript right mm -hmm. or any other for uh, type language you could give this a type and then it force you to imply to the type okay so I'm just going to rename this text input because we are yeah, hard that's coding. Totally yeah. fine. That's totally fine. Uh, input, text input, text input, then import as well. Mm -hmm. Text input and rename this as well. Yep, uh, then now we have our borders consistently going through. Let's yes, try yes. adding one item and then let's also add it to that one. And then we'll delete it so that we remember that our functionality from previous discussions are still good. Okay. So I will. Yeah. Sorry, what do you want me to do? Just add one other item, update mm -hmm. that, and then let's also delete that. Uh, P, Q, R can update it pqz and then i can also delete it yes it's working so our current operations are still working but yes. these are just local to the yeah it's state. in memory yeah mm -hmm. uh, your video is kind of frozen cool yeah. so we did a style based refactor now our code is more dry mm -hmm. now uh, right. we want so, to use a uh, web service uh, I, I would say uh, a rest api right mm -hmm. so cool, yeah. i think yeah where, where should we start uh so do you have uh api first of all we can we can find one we can say dummy notes api i have yeah, one sure. but the problem with uh, that yeah. is it's not building uh, like i it's it's dockerized and it's funny so let me just share my share that screen as well on this um, VS code and then but you'll have to I, I think you'll have to see it on the stream I am I am okay so go to this one code dot exe uh, it's still not on stream by the way yeah yeah um yes now it should be uh visible <laughs> let me move it above yes it should be visible now <laughs> is it visible yeah okay so i'll enable docker first it was giving me some weird errors so basically uh this what it does is uh <laughs> you can just delete this auth I don't need this. Hmm. 
inside main i have this i can remove these as well i don't want any authentication now yeah uh yeah so i have a router got notes i'll delete auth yep notes and then i have four four uh five routes basic crud operations and then um what i can also do is yeah i, I can remove these unused imports i hope whoever is watching this stream knows python otherwise they can just skip this part i'll put a timestamp i'll remove this dependency injection Uh, yes, this should be fine. Now I need to, instead of MySQL service, I will, mm -hmm. I will use a, a SQLite service, and then Connection string on this one, and that is yes. Now I can attempt to run this. Can you see my terminal as well? Uh, on on VS Code. It's coming on the stream. It, it's coming on the stream. Okay. Give it a second. So I'll build this one. Okay. It's building, it's installing some dependencies. I think I'll have to remove some of those. Mm -hmm. It was failing. Let's see. I don't need this, this, this. My SQL, PyODBC, SQL Alchemy. Yeah. Can get rid of those. Well, it's using fast API, that's nice. Yes. Fast API is amazing. Shout out to uh, yeah. Sebastian Demiris. <laughs> The guy who has too many Udemy degrees. Yes. No, it's not Udemy, right? It's, it's all that. kinds of all. He hasn't left anything. Like there are hundreds, uh, if not wrong, yeah. like fift at least fifty yeah. courses yeah. that he has done. I'll cancel this build because I'll I'll yeah. do a fresh one with reduced dependencies. So is there a way, uh, like is there a shortcut in mm -hmm. a React application that you can just plug in an open API and it will create a service for it? Nope. Nothing like that. It's a library, it's not a framework. Mm -hmm. So uh, like I, there, there's a, this really cool tool. I think it's it exists for every language, but in especially in Visual Studio you have this. Yeah, the build is done. I'll. Mm -hmm. I'll run this. So what you can do in that is you can just give it a, either a WSDL and I think that is a standard like every uh, corporate lang language does that. You give it a WSDL or an open API and it will create a client for you like like a SDK, client SDK for using that open, uh, open API spec. So build a successful uh, Interesting. SQL session maker database service. Yeah and i need to run this
Yes. So the server is running and I can close this and we should see it on localhost 80. But how will you connect it to localhost? We'll do ngrock. Cool, cool, cool. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, I was, I was creating a blog and then uh -huh. I didn't complete it. So I just added this page in my IIS server. I'll have to disable this site. Makes sense, yeah. Let's see if we have it running. Nope. Maybe. Um, should be there. Let me restart the container. So, do you have CRUD operations on that already? Or? Yes, yes, there are CRUD, CRUD operations. I actually created that. Uh, okay, so the one is already in progress. I'll have to. No, it's not. Yeah, I created that when uh, when we ended our last stream because I anticipated that we'll be mm -hmm. doing this CRUD operation at some point. So, I created that. Makes sense, yeah. But after that, uh, oh. Sebastian Remer has released a new uh, library called SQL Models. Yeah. So currently what you have to do is you, in, in Python, you kind of have to create two separate kind of models. One is SQL Alchemy and one is the fast API, which is the, uh, what is it? It's not data class, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't remember which one is it. I'll have to see, Pydantic, yes, Pydantic models. So now with that, like it's a wrapper around both and then you can use the same models to as, as a DTO as well as, you know, how you expose it outside. I'll run this interactive. Let's hope it doesn't fail, nothing else. It's running on 80, I'll just keep it open. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I'll move it down. Are you able to see the the browser? Yep. Okay. Can you see the the documentation? Mm. Not yet, but yeah, that's fine. I mean, doesn't really matter. Okay. Now I can see it, but good. Cool. Okay. So this is the beauty of fast eBay auto documenting. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if I do get uh, and execute. I get an internal server error. Cool. Uh, <laughs> what What's the error? Um, it says no such table notes. Okay. You had to run some migrations or something. Yeah, I I didn't create those. I, I'm too lazy. But then, okay. I think I need to create a SQLite database. I'll just create one. Let's let's just use the in memory one only. Mm -hmm. Oh, this file has to exist, exist, right? Let's see if I have D Beaver. Mm. I'll be able to um, run a query on that SQL database. Makes sense. window capture and I'll add dbweaver to it yeah that's the problem with OBS right you'll have to capture each window yes yeah can you see it now dbweaver I think I guess there's a lag uh, so no, 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 I can see it. I can see it. That's fine. Okay. So I'll go to that again. Put it in hello world folder. Note scrud. There it is. Yes. And I need to create a SQL app dot db. Okay, it already created that. And can create a table, 
create a new table and this should have let me refer to my code notes notes TTO um, core contracts there it is model notes model yes so it has an ID and a text okay I'll call it uh, notes and I'll save it ID open editor So it's there now and it should run. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers. Um, okay, I'll go back to this backend and refresh it. Try it out. Skewed. Nope. What's the error now? No such table. Notes. I'm reading through. SQL dot app dot db it is there I'll create a new connection table notes it is there uh, and what's the problem I need to write a SQL to add something to it insert into notes values yep select start start from notes data is there I'll just restart this uh, container There's something wrong, we'll have to use something else, I guess. So let's say we can do. Uh, so, you want to uh, basically uh, do the API bit today, or you want to learn something different? We can do APIs because I wanted to know how I can consume external services. Sure. So, let's just find some dummy one. Mm -hmm. So I got this one, right? And if I call this, it's just too many requests. Apparently, uh, it's mm -hmm. this one now. I don't know. Sorry, what? Yeah, there it is. I found uh, it. DB is on top. Okay, I'll remove T Beaver. So this is REQRES.in 
and it has APIs and I think we can use this one yes yeah, so this is I think a standard uh, JSON web API now how do we like what's what's the pattern how do we create this as a client uh, right so uh, how you use this is basically like let's just copy one endpoint and put it in the uh, to do a component and then i'll show you how to consume it okay so I'm back at this yes now yeah where do i where do i paste this uh, also, uh, can you like quickly share your screen on me? Okay. I'll share a window. Um, Just share the whole thing. Huh? Let me know. You can see it. Yep, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. It's great cool. now. Good. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's look at the... So now, I need to introduce a new thing to you, right? Mm -hmm. So, what you want to do is basically consume some data, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the data is going to come from some network, right? Okay, yeah. So it's going to take some time between when you request for it and when it arrives to you, mm -hmm. right? So for any use uh, where it's not synchronous and it might take some given interval of time, right? Yeah. Uh, we need to, so uh, how our UI can do is we have to update state for you or the other, mm -hmm. correct? And in this case, what we need to do is we need to change the state at some given point of time. Mm -hmm. We don't know what point of time that is going to be, but at any given point of time, right? Mm -hmm. And when some given value, like whatever that value is going to be, is going to change, uh, we want a thing to re-render, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So now what you need to do is you need to first know what this patch is, right? So Patches. that is a browser API that helps you fetch do these requests, right? What is it? Fetch or what? Patches? Is... No, no, it's called just Fetch. Okay. It's F -A -T -C -H. Okay. It's a browser API that allows you to work with network requests, right? Okay. So let's look at the a little bit of documentation and copy some code from MTF so that we know that what it looks like. Okay. What do I search? Yeah. Fetch? So just fetch JavaScript MDN. Fetch in Mozilla, okay. Mozilla, yep. yeah. Uh, so, this is what it looks like, right? Okay, uh, so you fetch something and then correct. You do a then, okay. and then if there is an error, that goes in the fetch block. Cool. Okay. So, let's copy the snippet. Mm -hmm. and right now, where do you place it? Right, I'll so create a new function. Uh, and a new state I would say. Uh, no, no. So, uh, first question is, when do you, uh, in the, so there is a life cycle to a component, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's constructed, then it's ready to be mounted, mm -hmm. uh, then it's mounted, uh, so it's visual, visually there, right? Mm -hmm. Then, once it's visually there, then multiple renders can happen, right? So, those are called update cycles, and then it can also be removed from the DOM. Right. So, in all of these, the ideal place to put any such timed things is once the first paint has happened. Mm -hmm. So basically, the component has rendered uh, its initial UI, and then we should do that. Too, right. So, how how do we do that? Right. So we have this thing called UI So if mm -hmm. you go to to do app and then go to line number one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, like similar to use state, we have something called use effect. Okay. Use effect. And what? Okay. Yes. Now, what use effect does is, is to, it's a little complicated API. But for our use case, what we can do is, if we want to run something, mm -hmm. right, just after the component has rendered for the first time, mm -hmm. right? That's exactly what we want, right? So, what we need to do is we need to pass this thing a function. Okay. okay? And as the second argument, we'll pass an MTL. Okay. Cool. So, uh, right. so if you want to run something, that should run only once. Mm -hmm. 
in the component cycle and should run after the component has rendered the first time right uh, mm -hmm. the code should go here right Okay, I'm not able to edit this. I think uh, there's something wrong. Uh, with I'll give, uh, give me just one second. Now you are. So okay. the fetch code goes there, right? So mm -hmm. if you paste it here, uh, now you will be able to use it, right? Uh, yep. And let's replace this, right, uh, with the URL that we have. Okay. Uh, and now, if you open the console, mm -hmm. uh, we should be able to see this data coming. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I did. So uh, if I yeah. refresh this, cool. what happens? So even uh, though so I didn't call it, it, like why is it then? Uh, you did call it though. Uh, you are consuming the component outside, right? Uh, it's rendering because you are consuming the component. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. This is a call. Yeah. Correct. So what use effect is doing here is basically the other parameter, the, this empty array, mm -hmm. right? It's called the dependency array. Okay. So what use state does is it's a very clean API and does a very minimal. So it takes a function mm -hmm. and a dependency array. And basically runs this function inside use effect every time some variable inside the dependency array changes. Okay. Got it? Yeah. But when you pass an empty array, it will run once the component has completely loaded. Okay. Cool. So and consider empty array as a special case. Cool. Mm -hmm. And if you don't pass anything, so if you don't pass second argument, uh, first of all, you shouldn't do that. But if you do that, it will re-render on every, so it will run on every re-render. Okay. So no conditional rendering, no conditional calling, etc. Right. So this function of ours is only running the first time when the component is loaded, right? Mm -hmm. Now you want to use this data some like in some meaningful way, right? Mm -hmm. So let's look, first of all, let's go to the console to get the structure of our data. Yes. So we have a page and then a data array right. and within data, we have objects. Each object has ID, email, first name and avatar. Correct. And avatar is an image. Cool. Yes. So what we can do is uh, copy the first object, uh, like hard coded copy. Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's paste this in our JavaScript. Where? Any place, like just like make a comment or something. Okay. Like want to comment this. Mm -hmm. Correct. So why did we do this is, uh, now I want to make a component that can render this information, right? Mm -hmm. And let's do that with hard coded information so that later on we can just populate it with props, right? So I'll just create a new file called profile.js. Right. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be JSX. Mm -hmm. The JS is also fine, JSX is better, but that's so the first line is always import react from react. And I'll cut this, paste it there. Uh, mm -hmm. Import react. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, double quotes. Both, uh, so the path in JavaScript imports goes as like, like mm -hmm. yep. And now we want to make a function function and this we need to export yep. Uh, yep. Uh, so you profile. can also write default export function export default so now we have our now the return which is going to be the UI bit of it so what do how, what, what do we want to return here. Yeah, so we will look into that. So let's create a return first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then inside return. Now let's think about it, right? So we have an image. Mm -hmm. And then we have this, this, this. So wait, I'll create that quickly. Uh, so if I do this. And uh, so let's say I created this. 
and then strike the split by creating image, right? And then that image press house in between the two. Post that. So, copy this. Paste it here, right? Mm -hmm. and then I can close my image. And then, uh, so I create like a fill, and then inside this fill, let's create a few key parts. I can see this, 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 the first one is going to be this. Okay. Why don't we do props dot email props dot first name? Uh, I I want you to change it in later. Okay. I am actually going to use hard coded values and then you are going to change it with props. Okay. So I am just helping you with a little bit of side work. Mm -hmm. So now I uh, what I want to do is I want this to be like so. Uh, pause me whenever you feel that you don't know this right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if it's not related to CSS, I uh, you know you don't care about that. So, I'll just get that. Right. So, it's direction is going to be the going. Then, one more time. Uh, or maybe I don't need this. Let's try this maybe. If we do this much, right? Mm -hmm. And then we go to uh, under the hood thing, so we then go to It's called profile, right? Profile. I'm not able to hear you. Your voice is kind of muffled. Uh, so it's called profile, right? So, yes. like, if you refresh your screen now, yes, I can see. You should it. be able to see some profile too, right? Yes. Cool. Uh, so, this is good enough. Yeah, I guess I'll just put the. So wait, let me just also center the line stuff. Yeah. This is art. <laughs> Center aligning stuff. Yes. It looks really bad, but I guess we can work with it. I can see uh, email, first name, last name, and then uh, oh. profile picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we also want to add padding to each P. Yep, uh, we'll do it here. So, good. This is good enough, I guess. Yes. Cool. So now let's first go to the profile and then like replace all the hard coded thing with props. Mm -hmm. So the natural values that you're going to think will be consumed. Mm -hmm. So I'm here. Should I start yeah. uh, doing props dot whatever? Yep. Uh, so let's start from SRC. How would you replace the SRC? So I will do a single curly bracket. And then inside that I can write props dot, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, avatar, what's that key? Yep, avatar is fine. Okay. Yeah, so I did props dot avatar. Mm -hmm. It's not doing anything. Yep, because we didn't pass it. 
But we didn't even call it in to do app, right? So why is it rendering? We did. It's at the bottom of it. I did it. Okay. Okay. No props pass yet. So here I'll pass okay. props dot. Uh, so props is uh, if you do it that way, mm-hmm. it's taking props as a string. So if you want to use ask, what do you do? I do single brackets. Yeah. Props. Dot. Uh, Email. Okay. We can form the key names. Yes. Yeah. This is. So now what we do is uh, we cut the thing that we had pasted up top. Mm-hmm. Uh, make it a hard coded object and pass it as a prop. Sorry, what what do you want me to do? Uh, so the structure object that we created uh, in comments mm-hmm. up top. Yes. Yeah. Let's cut this and pass this uh, in to do app. Yep. Uh, Let's pass it to that. So now I want to show you a neat trick, all right? So mm-hmm. now you pass it here, right? That right? It won't work. So what we can do is we can go up top. We can go where? Uh, top of this file. Then get it. Go go where? Yeah, top of this this file. Uh, this file. Itself. Okay, line one. You mean? Okay. Yep. Uh, I mean line. So line seven. Which. Hmm. Uh. Press enter a few times. Yep. And now you can do a cons. Uh, so you create a variable like that. Uh, give it any name, whatever you want. Uh, profile. Sure. And now let's make it an empty object. Okay. Inside that, let's paste that thing that we copied. Uncomment. Uh, add uh, commas at the end of each one. Uh, yep. Yep. Now we got the object, right? Yes. Now what I want to show you is, uh, you have an object, right? Mm-hmm. But you want to pass these values as individual values. Yes. How do you do that? So what do you do is you use the spread operator. Okay. So what you say is you write an object of group. Yes, but in curly braces. Okay. This goes in curly braces. Yep, and this should work fine. Yeah, this is. Cool. So now we are going to get object from API, and we know how to render that. Right. Mm-hmm. Now only thing remains is that we need to have a start, which is going to show nothing. Mm-hmm. It's basically going to be an empty state, right? Yes. Similar to our how our to do works, right? Mm-hmm. So let's go up top and create a state for profiles. Const profiles. Empty yep. list. Uh, yep. And now let's do the same thing that we did with UL. Mm-hmm. So on this profiles, we want to map. Yes. Right. So how do we do that? You can create a function. No, no. But uh, see the UI. We have already done it for items. Yes. See how we have done this for item. What What do you want to do? Uh, so for each profile, mm-hmm. I want you to render one profile in the okay. profile. Okay. Okay. Right? So I'll just copy this thing here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then, and this is a UL, so I I can. And this uh, is so outside. Basically, right? that's exactly what you have to do, right? You just need to change on what you do, then inside the function. So what I can do is, you know what? I'll I'll just remove these elements from here. 
right we don't need this as a side profile here that's fine i mean but you still have to copy that code right uh yeah i'll just copy it somewhere i mean just copy then comment okay so i'll comment this something now yeah i will comment this and then instead right, of so ul you don't need the ul so you can get rid of the ul why because uh, this is going to be one element that we render right so instead of li i will be returning a profile okay uh ul was there because those were list titles mm -hmm. the hierarchy of html ul and li exist that's why we had those mm -hmm. uh now our profile is just a div right mm -hmm. so we can stack divs on top of each other okay that's totally fine okay so i can just remove it no no the only the so what i want you to see is notice what part is helping us loop and sort of loop so there is a sort of loop in this piece of code mm -hmm. i want you to notice that bit so this is the loop right so what i'm seeing is inside exactly. a ul you're basically yeah. adding as many list elements as there are items in this so it's not instead of a ul inside a ul yes inside a ul you are adding multiple right. lis yes but so then that's how mm -hmm. where do i add okay so now i i don't need this i can just do uh profiles dot map but you need a curly brace to write the answer right yes so i'll do curly brace mm -hmm. and then profiles dot mm -hmm. map and then uh, i want to pass it a function correct which takes uh we don't want to this take this will give you so the what map does it it gives you the items mm -hmm. and the index of that item so it's basically going to give you a profile and the index which you don't really need so no worries we do actually because we are going to render pages okay right, let's see what it does we okay. want to do right now and return... this function should return a piece of jsx right yes correct mm -hmm. So I'll. Right. What happened? Mm -hmm. I'll paste. So notice that you. Uh -huh. And then. Right. But now, what do you pass? Spread inside. I'll just pass profile. Yep, that's right. So, uh, do you also notice that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. This looks good. Yeah. Now the only thing that's left to do is. Uh, once your data is there right you mm -hmm. need to add that data to your state right yes so think about how you can do that so look one at where you are getting that data one thing right since first, we want to see this updated right mm -hmm. this api what we are it it takes a query param page mm -hmm. right let's say i want uh, a button or maybe if there is a increment counter that i can use whenever that changes we'll do that we'll do that let's just consume profile once mm -hmm. and then we'll do that we'll do okay. pagination buttons so first let's just do this with this query parameter only right okay. let's do it for page 1 let's just think that the page is hard coded for now right okay so look at the second then right mm -hmm. inside then you run a function and there you get the data right currently we are just console logging this right so, so that's uh, why we don't this right we got a response and then we returned right. a json yeah. right and this is going to return data and then on that data we are doing a den mm -hmm. then uh yeah so how uh, basically so this is a process so let me explain a bit about this right mm -hmm. so what's happening here is a uh, fetch uh, returns a promise mm -hmm. what happens with then and catch chaining is uh, in the promise hierarchy whenever you write a then right mm -hmm. doesn't matter how many of them are there they will run one after the other until the point that 
the previous iteration returned a promise okay, okay? so fetch works fetch returns a promise mm -hmm. this step us then will work when the promise returned by fetch is resolved so mm -hmm. when we get back the data is resolved right mm -hmm. now the data comes in a response object it's mm -hmm. a javascript thing mm -hmm. to convert it into json you have to write response.json okay lucky for us response.json also returns a promise okay okay because the parsing to a json object might take time mm -hmm. right and they don't pre parse it for you for any type so that you have get the control of typing it to any type okay mm -hmm. then the next then runs which actually gets the data which is now in json format and the json in javascript becomes object format right so here the console log that you are getting is the result of the promise that resolved after the data came and then it was passed into json okay so let me think about right. this one uh, so this is then and inside then uh, we are passing this function mm -hmm. and i can just do a backspace here i'll just format this yes so inside this we have data mm -hmm. and now i can right. do um, set profiles mm -hmm. and then inside profiles i can do mm -hmm. data dot and what was that data dot data. data yep yep this looks good this looks good this this works yes this works yep it it right. rendered everything yep rendered everything yep. yeah so it's as simple as like that you just consume data from a pixel like this okay so let's say now i also want to create a uh, called page and then set page yep you are getting the hang of it already yes and then page starts from one, one i guess yes yep. now what we want to do is uh, here we will pass in mm -hmm. um, like this i don't know how do we pass it so so uh, use that syntax uh, yep you can do that that's cool yep that works completely fine okay now i need a button that can change this mm -hmm. so instead of the add button right uh -huh. i can just remove all this stuff so so yep yep let's just remove whatever not top and then let's add a plus minus button there which will decrease increase and decrease so not the top bit let's leave the top bit apart from that everything can be done everything is contained as that is right yes so i'll remove yep. this all this can be commented yeah and let's create two buttons with simple button button Mm -hmm. um, yep. And what do we? It has a closing tag. It has a closing tag. So let's close this. Yep. Uh, let's right. And we need one more. And in, you can say uh, move forward or move back, like for pages, right? Yep. Plus and minus also works. So we need another one for minus. So I will also do a. Uh, uh, text sort of between these two a p tag maybe okay yeah i show i mean the which shows the p yep makes sense and then inside this i will just put mm -hmm. a page yep should work and then yeah. on click yes so yeah mm -hmm. there's there it is again right okay. so i have to do on click Mm -hmm. And then this on click. Let's just to... let's just uh, ignore the edge cases for now, and let's just simply increment it or increment the page, right? What what? How do we do it? Yep. So that's uh, so you already know, right? So mm -hmm. page is a state. Yes. You need to change. Yes, right? but on buttons on click. Yep, on click works. I mean, on click takes a function that will run when you press that button. Okay. So, so... think about it. I'll do on click. Mm -hmm. uh, C capital. Yep. And then this takes. So you uh, have to write some JavaScript. 
for this topic next time i'll make sure my apis work and then yeah we'll see you